All right, everybody, some big pieces set to return for the Colorado Avalanche. We will discuss that, what the lines might look like, which also means some big decisions are supposed to be made or should be made here. Could they be happening in the very near future with the abs? We'll discuss all that and some questions from our subtext people coming up on Locked on Avalanche. Your Locked on Avalanche, your daily podcast on the Colorado Avalanche. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody, welcome to the Locked On Avalanche Podcast. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Chris Maselli. With me, as always, is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. Thank you for tuning in, making it your first listen of the day. Always appreciated. Make sure you're following us on our social media outlets, LOP and underscore Avalanche on Twitter, X. Locked on Avalanche on Instagram and threads. Questions, comments, concerns, and opinions. Locked on Avalanche at gmail.com. And make sure you are following us over on our YouTube channel. Hit subscribe, get notified when a new show goes live. And subscribe to our subtext. Link to that is in the show notes below. When you do, you become a special insider with Kyle and myself. And we get all your takes and opinions on everything Avalanche and questions. Like we will do a little bit later. Oh, actually, really, during the duration of this show, we're going to be inputting like questions uh, from our subtext people. It's kind of where we're pulling a lot of the stuff from today. Uh, but where we are going to start, Mr. Sullivan, is with uh, two names who should be returning on Wednesday when the Avs play the Washington Capitals. Uh, one is Bill Byram on the defensive end, and the other is Arturi Lekkinen, who is finally coming back after that scary hit into the boards that he took which seems like it was so long ago um but he he came back pretty much on time maybe towards the earlier stage of what they said i think they said like 12 to 14 weeks and i think we're right around the 12 week mark maybe yeah. somewhere around there. so um he's set to return uh and just your thoughts right there we'll start there and then we'll kind of build off of that just getting those two guys back uh, it, it clearly helps, clearly helps his team. Yeah. You're, you're excited to see what Lekkonen can bring back, see what kind of mojo that can bring back to the forward court. Not like they need it right now. I mean, the forward group is humming, but you can see Bo Byram coming back. That's going to be interesting and appealing because we have lamented the defensive woes for the past couple episodes. Now and the everydayers know the defense is not that great right now. So could Bo Byram get us right back to, old avalanche form or are we getting more delay of game penalty <laughs> yeah i mean he's not the guy that like suddenly takes your your uh, eliminates your defensive problems yeah um so we'll we'll have to see you know and he's been out for a couple weeks so he you know how much longer is it going to take for him to get back, back into the flow of things hopefully not that long the way that you know where you are in the season but the as far as the lines go um Evan Rolf from Colorado Hockey Now posted the lines in practice. And this is what they looked like right now. Uh, Druen, McKinnon, and Rantanen. That's your first line. The, the, the third line uh, that's to start the season has pretty much been bumped up to the second line in Wood, Colton, and O'Connor. So that is your second line now. Your third line is Lekkonen, uh, Johansson, and Cogliano. And your fourth line is... McDermott, Olafson, and Kivi Ranta. Um, so, I mean, we're, we're talking about this because Lekkanen is back. And they put him on the third line to start, and I really don't have a problem with that. See see what see what he can do, you know, get him back into to, to game mode. He might need, you know, a little bit to kind of just get get the, the, the blood flowing again. Um, so to, not only to do that, but to put him on a line with Joh Johansson and Cogliano might be better for – for Ryan Johansson as well. That he might benefit from this too. Yeah, I honestly when I saw that line, I just immediately it's one of those synergy things like if you play the EA Sports NHL games, like when you play around with the line synergies, you get mm -hmm. like a plus 3. This is a plus yeah. 3. Like this is exactly what you want. It doesn't just improve it ease Lekkinen back into the game, but it also ascends the game of both Cogs and Rijo. So, I mean, how can you argue with that? But what do you do once he does get back into, you know, game shape and, and what's expected of him? Because he was a top line guy 
for mm-hmm. a little while. You know, you know, since um, Landis Cog has been out for two years now. So much more has been expected of him. And I think he's going to work himself back into that role. So fast forward even a little bit more. When when Lekkonen is 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 back to what we expect him to be, and maybe in a few weeks when you get Val Nachuskin back, and then you are a, a if if nothing happens in the meantime during that time, knock on wood, um, then you are no, a healthy miles. team. Yeah, <laughs> you're, 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 miles, a, <laughs> you're, you're a healthy team at that point. So input Val Nachuskin here. And, you know, I, I think it's pretty easy to say, like, Kibi Ronto would be the, the forward who would be gone. Uh, but what what do these lines look like? Where, where do you – because the Wood-Colton LOC line has been fantastic. Mm-hmm. So do you break them up? No. Do you break the, the top line of Drew N. McKinnon and Ranton and up? Maybe you go back to that. Maybe you go back to moving Ranton into the second line to – Mm, man, I'm kind of interrupting myself and really thinking about this because it's a good problem to have. It's a good problem to have, but what, what do you think? I think, honestly, with this top line, the way they're playing right now, Drew in included, short of Hey Duke and Forsberg walking the door, you're not going to touch that first line, even with Drew in in there. I know what Lekkanen did on that first line, but we have been talking about you can't run this first line into the ground. And what's the first thing? What you go back and look at the the time on ice, the fourth line gets cut off, and you're running three lines. Mm-hmm. I say that second line is just as hot as the top line right now, and as it is with Lekkonen, I'd keep that third third line as it looks, and then you're looking at that line a little bit closer to time, and mm-hmm. you you're playing around with the third and fourth lines unless by the time Nachushkin comes back you might look at dropping that second line back to the third but you're not touching Drew in McKinnon and Ranton it well i mean i, <clears throat> I say the, re- the reason you're not touching that right now is cuz right now it's it everything seems to be <clears throat> clicking for that line will that continue will will Drew in yeah. continue to play the way he's playing remains to be seen it's just who do you have more faith in on the top line do you have more faith in Arturi Lekkanen on your top line or do you have more faith in Jonathan Drouin on your top line well, and I don't know if there's a wrong answer to that man and there and there isn't it, it, it's one or two you, like if you have the you have the luxury of playing with that line you can make that change mid-game but as it's going like you don't automatically like they're handling it right like Lekkanen put him on that third line let him get back sure. to where he he was on that first line and then evaluate but even right now if it's one of those things that the top line's not clicking for some reason you make the swap you drop your window it's it's that easy but yeah but the, right here's now, the thing <clears throat> here's the thing if you do that mm-hmm. and and you want to keep the 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 roaring 20s line together on your second line you're not only swapping lekin and, and drew in you're you're swapping him going from the first line to the third line. So if if you're keeping the second line together or things change a little bit when you have Nachuskin back because now you can play a little bit more. I man, like it it, it there, there's so many combinations that the Avalanche can do once found Nachuskin comes back and you have a healthy team and it's just a gluttony of riches on how you want to do it. And keeping a line together just to keep them together just you know it, it, I, should you do that? Yeah, if things are, are rolling well, but if if they're not, then you can move some things around. Just the, the Lekkanen and Druin one really is kind of intriguing because where you have that Wood, Colton, and LOC line is is really, that's your second line right now. And but honestly, you do, like when this is a fully healthy team, man, like this was what we were talking about at the beginning of the season where, yeah, they have depth. They have a, they're a very deep team when healthy. They haven't been, but hopefully they will be uh you know right around the corner and now we're back to the stuff that we were talking about in the beginning of the season where this is a tough team to go up against and see and we also have to shift our mindset from the 2010s early 2010s philosophy of hockey just because you're on the top line it doesn't automatically make you like best players top line next best players second line Mm -hmm. vegas just won the cup with four solid lines and the Avalanche need to get to that. They need, if they want to make, if they want to 
not replicate last year, getting bounced in the first round. They got to start constructing this team to be playoff caliber. And that's what they need to do. It's not just reward good play and have this is you did good. So enjoy the top line for two or three games. They need to solidify synergy, like synergy on the lines. And you know, you had the roaring 20s as the, your second line. You need mm. to have a line identity. So when these guys are getting shifted, you can have a second, a third, and a fourth line that you're not giving six minutes a night. Four mm. solid lines. That's where they need to be playing. It's not so much, you did good, congratulations, you get a promotion. We need th- four lines of three mini teams. <laughs> because yeah. that that's what they have when it comes to the depth. And when it's, like you said, we we don't have Landis Gog, but this will be the healthiest the Avalanche have looked in a long time. And they need to start playing with that depth and pushing for the playoffs and making four solid lines. Because we've been talking about wins and losses, but that's been on really three lines because of the minutes they've been giving the fourth line. And it's time to stop that and get to a playoff version of what this team is going to be. Well, early in the season when when things were healthy, they were. They were we were talking about look, look yeah. at the ice time. Look how look yeah. how evenly distributed the ice time is. <clears throat> Not even um minutes wise, just how how lines should be rolled out and minutes per line. They, they were doing that. You had to kind of go off of that because of the injuries and you become more of a top heavy team right now in the way some guys are playing, like with Ryan Johansson not really giving you what you expected. So things shift during the course of a season. But it, it you know, the 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 light at the end of the tunnel is there if Nachus can come can come back healthy relatively soon, where you can get back to that. You can get back to that. And now I want to focus in on uh the defensive end, uh, mm. with Bo Byram coming back. And and even beyond that, does it does this mean moves could be happening soon? Uh, and we'll just kind of describe what we're talking about, what we want to see from moves and who to bring in if you do that. We'll talk, which they should be doing. Uh, we'll talk about that and a lot more to get to. We'll do that coming up next. First, we're going to hear from Game Time and the Game Time app. And Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. And right now, all users can get $100 off when they buy a big game ticket with the code Vegas100. I'm not a fan of that code, but hey, it's... uh, it's a code that gets you a pretty good deal. Uh, with, with killer last-minute deals, all-in pricing, views from your seat, and the best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. And some of the things that we love about the Game Time app, like we said, <clears throat> the view from your seats before you buy, you know exactly where you're sitting, what to expect, what your point of view looks like. All-in pricing shows your total price up front so you know you're getting a great deal before you check out and you can buy tickets in seconds with just two taps. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. And right now, all Game Time users get that one hundred dollars off of a big game ticket with the code Vegas one hundred. Terms apply. So just download the Game Time app, use the code V E G A S one zero zero for one hundred dollars off a big game ticket. Or if you're not going to the game, use the code Locked On. You can still use that one. L O C K E D O N for twenty dollars off of your purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. On the defensive end, we Bo Byram touched on that. Um, him coming back, <clears throat> that's obviously a big deal. And now things get a little convoluted on the defensive end because now you're healthy there. So not only are you healthy. Sam Malinsky has has taken his moment and his opportunity and really run with it. And now you have those decisions you have to make on the defensive end because you have Kale and Taves. That's your top line. Uh, You have Sammy G. You have um, Josh Josh Manson. Manson. Now you have Byram. And who's that sixth guy who it's been Jack Johnson all season long? Malinsky throws a wrench into that. Do you keep with the young buck? Or do you go with the old guard and and say, hey, Sam Malinsky, you prove yourself. You've proven yourself. Um, you're a massive part of our future, but we're still going to be sending you down for now. Or not even, you know, not sending you down. You, you could be on the roster or whatever. You're not going to be starting anymore. What, what do you think? What do you do? 
I go look at Sam Malinsky and I put my hands on his shoulders and say, Sam, you're on the case, Malinsky. And I push him out there. I say, Jack, go take a nap. We'll talk to you in the playoffs. You're old. It's time for you to take a nap. Rest yeah, up, but, heal but, up. And I'm just playing devil's advocate here, but like mm -hmm. I'm pleasantly surprised with what Jack Johnson's been doing. Oh, it's been I'm wonderful. Sure. It, he, he's been fine. He has been fine. He's no longer really that liability that he was when he first joined the Avalanche. And I think that's just him getting comfortable uh, knowing what his role is and playing it relatively well. Sam Alinsky, he's kind of exceeding expectations right now. Do you do you run with that for as long as you can? And if he starts to regress a little bit because he's kind of riding a wave right now, you have Jack Johnson in your back pocket and you go that route? Yeah, because yeah. like as soon as you tell Sam Malinsky you, you have the starting job, Jack Johnson will now go to Sam Malinsky, put his hands on his shoulders and say, thank you. I need a rest. I'm old. <laughs> and he'll go take a break. And this is nothing against Jack. Jack, he knows, and he, he'll tell you the same thing. Thank you for the rest. And now, he'll, he'll recuperate. Or if, if, if you are ready to go fully in on, on Sam Malinsky, is oh this boy. where 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 deals start to come into play here? Um, and uh, one of our subtext people, Amy, she asks, uh, definitely interested to hear your ideas for who we can get to fill the two C spot, and who might have who we might have to give up. Feels like we need to do something at goalie as well. What are your predictions there? So just kind of you know, she's asking specifically about the two C spot and goalie spot, which I think are what the Avs need to address, right? Is this where you kind of look? Is he expendable now? It, it, everybody's saying, like, oh, Malinsky is so good. That means Sammy G and Byram are expendable. No. Does that mean someone like Jack Johnson is expendable? And you can you can trade Jack Johnson for what, not what you're looking for in a 2C. You're not going to get a 2C for Jack Johnson, but uh, a backup goalie. Uh, maybe that's there. And, and I know the Avalanche would hate to trade Jack Johnson, and it probably wasn't what they were expecting at the beginning of the year. But they also were not expecting Malinsky to kind of come out of the shell like they expected or they thought either. So is that a road they could go down? You want me to really ruffle some feathers here? Please. Ruffle all the feathers. All right, to ruffle some feathers. What is the big goalie name right now floating around? Specifically for the Avalanche? Mm-hmm. Mark andre Fleury. Okay. You know what his contract it is right now? Oh, God. Uh, 3.5. I'll save you the work. Okay. He signed a two-year, $7 million deal. 3.5 mm -hmm. cap hit. Okay. So we go to Minnesota, knock on the door, wash your hands. That's a dirty door. And then <laughs> you say... Hi, this is Jack Johnson. You want him? We want Mark Andre Fleury. And they say, ha, that's silly. And then you say, but wait, there's more. Here's Curtis McDermott. I, uh, wow. I don't know if they, I mean, maybe they do that just from a numbers perspective, <clears throat> because that kind of would, you know, the Avalanche, they, they, they got to get, Money out yes. to Just bring that yes. in. I don't it's know. Either that, that, that's it's lot. either that or Rijo. Um, that that's a possibility. That's a little bit more even. That actually benefits the Avs because that, that saves them five hundred thousand dollars. The only um, reason I didn't pitch that initially because then you still are having the two C issues, and you're carrying McDermott and Jack Johnson. You're committing to them, and then mm -hmm. trying to address that later. If you get rid of Jack Johnson and McDermott bring in maybe with some retention on the salary. You'd have to, if it was those two guys, you'd have to. Yeah. And <clears throat> you work with there and then you have a clean slate where you can easily go pick up a two C with a little bit of change in your pocket, offer up Rijo mm -hmm. in that deal and improve that position as well. And bam. I think that's where the, if you're going to move Ryan Johansson, I think that's where it goes is to, to a two C move if you were to get rid of of jack johnson and curtis mcdermott in the same deal and while i i'm you know 
McDermott wouldn't be such a loss on the ice. He'd be a loss in the locker room. And Jack Johnson would be a loss in the locker room. That's two locker room guys that you are losing overnight. And that's a big deal. That is a big deal. To, to you know, What goes on in the locker room is, is almost equally as important as what goes on on the ice, really. So that would be a wow. That that would be something to go get a backup goalie and what you know. But the, if it was for Mark Andre Fleury, he's a locker room guy too. So you'd exactly. be replacing you know two locker room guys with one and your backup with championship pedigree. Yes, yeah, he's a Hall of Famer. Um, and the only thing is, right now he's hurt <clears throat> after that hit he took behind the net. I don't know how long. He's going to be out for. I think he missed the game on Sunday, but I haven't heard of how if he's going to be out. This is just day to day, or you know, he needed a game or whatever. Um, it's fine. We're going to run your gift on the ground anyway. So <laughs> that's the thing. Wait. I mean, you have you you would still make that deal because he's not expected to come in and, and just you know be the starter right away. So you would keep doing what you're doing until he's healthy, which I don't think if, if he is to miss like a week or something like that, you would you would suck that up and, and make the deal. I don't and know. If I, I, was, I think it's possible. I think it's possible. And if I was Minnesota, that just makes sense to me. That's my style. That's what will get me through having to p- pay off those albatross contracts and try and just be a team. Mm-hmm. Having a guy like Jack Johnson McDermott on your team, it'll help you get through. They would like that. They would like that. It works yeah. both ways. Um, as far as other, you know, she mentioned the 2C position. That's a big one for the Avs. Anybody in particular that, I mean, is it the usual suspects that we're thinking of here uh, who the Avalanche might try to target, but who knows if they can get? Yeah, and it's honestly with the Avs the way they are now, let's let's be real. If you're not going to land one of those guys and they're going to ask for everything, just promote from within and just make it work. Like your 2C, you, like the Roaring Twenties are working now. But we were just talking about when Nuke comes back, what can this team look like? And if you're going to keep Raijo, he'll it's not bad. It's mm-hmm. not terrible. Yes, it's not ideal. But my goodness, we if you're fixing the defense in the goalie position, you've won games already without a 2C, a clear 2C, that you thought yeah. you brought in the clear 2C. You're going to be okay. It's a risk. It's a risk to, to not address that heading into the playoffs. I mean, you you can you can make do through the regular season without you know doing what the Avalanche are doing. Clearly, they're doing that. You know, they don't have a defined two C. They thought they did, hasn't worked out. Um, I I think they want to go find that because they they know you know the playoffs are a different animal, and you you need that clear. And, you, and they know it. Look what they did. You know, the, the year they won the cup. You know, Nazem Kadri was your guy. Uh, and even though he was hurt for some of that, but he went out and he played, he played hurt. And, and that's, you know, he, he put up the best season of his career. Um, and that's what you need. That's what you need. So I think they go out and dress it, but just it, it becomes a numbers game and that's where it gets difficult. So I know Lynn home is, is the big name. He's like the number one trade target this year. I don't know if the ads can pull that off. For the past couple of years, uh, Adam Henrique has been a name that I really, really like. Yeah, I think he would be a good fit here. I think they could make that happen with, with Anaheim. I think that would be a really good one. And the last one I'll throw out, and I we talked about him a couple months ago. Um, and I don't even know, like it's so tough to know if if he's on the market or not because it seems like he he you know he was healthy scratch a couple times. And I'm talking about Morgan Frost on yeah. Philly. Um, he seems to be at odds with Tortorella, but I read that they had like just him and Tortorella had like a closed door meeting and kind of not smoothed everything out, but they both got on a level of where they understand where the other one is coming from. And Philly's playing better than I think a lot of people expected them to. So are they going to be in the seller's market this year? I don't know. I'd love to have Morgan Frost on this team. Yeah, that'd be, I, I really like his play. And honestly, I think that closed door meeting was just checking his passport and visa, make sure everything was updated in case he had to go north of the border. Because I, it's, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's one of those that if you could get a member of the Avalanche, you want to, you want to entertain that deal. But then also, Sackick has the reputation and McFarland of fleecing guys. So that reputation's mm-hmm. out there. So the phone calls are getting harder to pick up. And mm-hmm. you mentioned the Avs not being able to make it in the playoffs without a, a 2C, and just a couple years before the cup run, we went through Grubauer, Francois, and ended up with Hutchinson. 
and goal and then we yeah. saw how that ended you have it to have well. you have to have a goalie stable not just a backup a stable to make it to the playoffs and through it yeah even though you know you're you're Number one becomes the workhorse for mo most of the playoffs, but again, the the run that the Az went on, look what happened. They yep. needed uh, uh, to rely on Frankie for a while, so you need it. You and need where's it. he? He's not going to save the day right now. No, no exactly. So it, it this is you know we're at this point in the season, and there's some fascinating things that are awaiting the Avalanche here, probably within the next month. Yep, you'd have to think so. Uh, Excited to see where this thing goes. So, uh, but being healthy is the number one spot, and, and that and that's you know right around the corner. Most of it is is hopefully going to be here on Wednesday. So we'll watch that. More questions to get to uh, our subtext people, and uh, we're going to do that right after this. All right, let's hear from Sleeper, and once again, Mr. Shagavandum is scouring the interwebs and the Googles. And the hockey pucks trying to find an app that is uh, better for daily fantasy sports than Sleeper. And I'm wondering if you found one yet. No. No. Simple answer. No. Because regardless of where you are in the standings, we want to remind you that you could win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper. It's the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. And Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey. Because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests throwing it to you now sir for the abs next game on wednesday of who your daily fantasy sleeper is for the abs against the capitals it's been a quiet little you know what miles wood oh why not he's been a he's been a you, nightmare for want, teams lately i want he's I like gonna it. have a great fantasy game i like it i thought you'd go with lekin and just for coming back but hey go go with go with who's who's on a roll because all you have to do is pick whether studs like Miles Wood will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in a given game. Use the promo code locked on NHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That code is locked on NHL. See sleepers' terms of use for details and locational availability. All right, let's jump into some more questions from our subtext people here. Uh, this is from Electrician Ziggy. Uh, it says, is it me or does it does this season seem to be lacking in those highlight reel, quote, all hail kale moments in comparison to years past? I think he's got a point there. Like, And maybe we're, we're just expecting Kale McCarr to be doing those highlight reel moments like on a game by game and night by night basis but he might have a point here you don't really see those you you do see them but i think like the clip that we were seeing them at uh a year ago and two years ago it's kind of calmed down a little bit and he was injured earlier i wonder if that's just lingering around and he can't <clears throat> do kind of like specific moves that he wants to i think you just hit the nail on the head my friend i think that's hmm. still lingering and the highlights of him now are just coughing up the puck and just not making the best decisions right now. So, yeah, it's not normal Kale. The kryptonite has been taken to our Superman, and he's just a normal human being for right now. Well, no, I mean, but then he made, he made a move not that long ago. Uh, it was right on the blue line. I think it, I think, oh, I think it was against uh, uh, Cole Caulfield, actually, on, on, mm. uh, on Montreal, and just made him look foolish. So it's like he, he's still got it there. Like, you know, he's not he's not 100 percent, but he's not 20 percent either. You know what I mean? Like he's he's still got those moves. But, you, you know, you always think of that overtime Chicago yeah. goal and just him just floating on ice and, you know, breaking people's ankles like uh, it, 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 he's might have a point. It is a little bit less than we're used to and, you know, expecting from him. So. And that's just all for like the high re highlight reel package, which is always nice to see. But he's still producing. That's right. Give me, give me something know. to watch on TikTok, Kale. <laughs> um, let's see. How about where is this one? This is from James. So this is a pretty funny one. He goes, uh, 
I thought of a new way to make the All Star Weekend something I would watch, and I I want to hear your thoughts. Keep the skills challenges because those are fun, but the games are not fun to watch, and the players don't really play. Totally right there. Uh, what if instead of hockey, the players broke up into teams to play dodgeball or a similar non-hockey and non-traditional sport? This would be fun because you know these guys can play hockey and the defense is good at getting in the way of a small puck, but can they dodge stuff? Can they throw a ball and try to get someone out? Uh, I like this idea, man. Like, I don't want to watch it. We've talked about it so many times. I don't want to watch the, the All-Star game. And and I, I root for Avalanche players not to go for it because I don't want to watch the game. Not, nothing to do with rest. I don't care about the rest. I don't want to watch the game because it's so boring, and I have to now because there's three of them that are going. Uh, I like this. Do something completely. They don't need to play hockey. Do the skills competition and then just have an extension of that. Have a skills competition weekend and just do that. And and do do things that would be on the Ocho. That would be play darts or something. I don't care, but don't play hockey. I have one more for you. Yeah, That'll really it. spice it up. Mm -hmm. Take your conferences, the three on three. We are talking about every team doesn't need to be represented. You're right, because that slot belongs to a I legend. Hate that. Okay. Everybody gets to draft one legend per conference. Ooh. And they get to go out there. And it could be recently retired. It could be the Sedines. It could be mm. you could you could do anything. You could draft one legend and you could see all kind of fantasy matchups. Instead of an all-star weekend, it's fantasy weekend. Like fantasy all star weekend, you could play around with it that way, get old and new fans, mm -hmm. sit around a moment. Nobody's really taking it seriously. It's just kind of an exhibition. No money on the line. Uh, it's just fun to yeah. get out there and say, I got to play with. You might get Gretzky out there for a shift or two. It'd be cool. See Something. Forsberg. Yeah. Just spice it up a little bit. I think that is how all star games should be handled instead of playing for something, just a spectacle and a love letter to the game. Hmm. I like that. I like that. Yeah. I mean, cause those guys don't, don't play. I mean, they skate all the time, but you know, um, it, 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 it would just be like, you said, the spectacle of seeing them out there again yep. in a uniform Crosby uh, and would be awesome. Sign me up. Uh, that'd be awesome. I like that. Um, Madam battle ax. She wants to know what your degree is for. Oh. What are you going for in, in, in your, uh, your schooling? Well, I will. <laughs> she says, well, hang on. She says, hopefully it's to be able to take uh, to take over like the Department of Player Safety. Oh, funny you mentioned that. Is, no, I'm just kidding. Is that, a, is that a major? Can, can you major uh, in taking uh, over the Department of Player Safety? I wish you Let did. me change my major real quick. No, I, I graduate <laughs> December. I'll have my bachelor's degree in sports casting. There you go. When, when and you you're, and you're, you're going to be, you're, you're taking the place of Dan Patrick, I, I've heard. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> tall, <laughs> tall task. Um, and she gets in. Well, we have a couple questions here for uh, for Star Wars. Why not? Mm. Let's get into some Star Wars. You do this in the off season, but uh, our fans are Star Wars fans just like we are. She wants to know if a return of the Jedi or Empire Strikes Back people, she leans Jedi. I'm a return, you? I'm a return, yeah. Though. I mean. And there, this is it's like there's no wrong answer here, but no. um, you know, Empire is just considered one of the greatest movies ever. Um, and Jedi just seems to be like a, more of a fun movie. Yeah. So that, but um, they're both good. I'm not. I I can't answer that question. The, they're, no, they're because Return is the proper ending. It is. It is a very good ending. It's very good. Ending. Um, there's more for uh, Electrician Ziggy's back. Uh, who would you recast as Luke? Han, Anakin, and Obi Wan using only Avalanche players. I don't know if we'll do all these, but uh, Luke, I would, I'd probably put Kale as Luke, yeah, Kale. as like as a young Luke. Yeah, that, I mean that is totally him. Yeah, I could totally see Kale drinking blue milk. Yeah, so that's yeah. Kale. Kale's young Luke. Absolutely. Anakin, young Anakin, I would. Well, no, I want. I don't want to say young Anakin. Like Anakin as a whole, I'd probably put Nathan McKinnon there because he's like he he I is. <laughs> I don't he, like he can, sand. <laughs> no, he's he's like he has like this way about him that's like you know very calm and sweet. No, uh, but 
he's got some Sith in him when yeah, he's angry. Exactly. So exactly. he can turn. He can turn to the dark side quickly. Exactly. So yeah. I, that's why I'd put. I'd probably put McKinnon there. Uh, yeah, but... Obi Wan. Who? Obi Wan. Gabe. No, I. I. I would put. I. I put Miko as Obi Wan. He's just calm, cool, collected. Just kind of floats along. Just knows the answer to everything. Miko. Miko's a good Obi Wan for me. Miko's Jar Jar to me. He's just a goof. <laughs> no, Curtis McDermott is Jar Jar. <laughs> that, that is the almighty Jar. <laughs> uh, and then Vargar pipes in here with one. He goes, what are the top five best Star Wars properties of all times, including all the movies and TV shows? Um, I got five. I don't know if you do. If yeah, you know. I, and honestly, if if you have friends and family who are not Star Wars fans, mm. sit them down and watch Endor. Endor's on my list. That's fantastic. It's, what a show! What Ugh. a show! And yeah, on, if they love that, go Mandalorian. I see. I, I'm not a big Mandalorian fan. Uh, I think it, it's it's incredible. It's a it's okay. just enough Star Wars, but enough yeah. like my kids love Mandalorian. So yeah. Mandalorian it's okay. is incredible. So the, the five that I have, I'm not going to say like they are the best. I just, they're maybe, I still have to say like my favorite, but five that I just absolutely love. Andor is one of them. The The Clone Wars series is just fantastic. No. It, it's, I don't want to say it's underrated because it's widely beloved, but there's so much information in those, in that series that just ties so much into the Star Wars lore. That Clone yep. Wars series is, is invaluable. Um, there was a comic series, a Va Darth Vader comic series. It was one story arc, no, two story arcs. Um, but it takes place directly after episode three ends. Mm. So the beginning of book one is literally they recreate the no, like oh, that's in wow. that's in the comic book. And the whole thing is about uh, all of like the, the trials that he's put through uh, by Palpatine. And he has to go find like his kyber crystal and fight for his. It, it's it's incredible. I've got to look that up. So good. It, the comic is amazing. It's just called Vader. Uh, and or I got the the on Disney Plus the Tales from the Jedi. Yep. Series is wonderful. Wonderful. It's six episodes. Goes back and forth between Ahsoka Tano and Count Dooku and how Dooku kind of turned like the moment he turns. Yep. Is in there, and I'm not going to spoil it. So good, so good. Watch it, uh, and then I have put the original episode four, A New Hope. Got to put that in there just because that's where it all started. Knights of the Old Republic is my. That's one a great round one. Too. I have yeah. logged so many hours into that. And there's some books like the Thrawn books are fantastic. If you haven't read those, uh, read those. But there's just there's so much to pick from. The Whittle Down to Five was tough, but. Did my best. I look forward to Vargar's. He didn't want to say what his were before we said ours. So uh, I look forward to that. It's fine. All Nobody's right. going to say episode two, Vargar. You could say. Oh, man. Now <laughs> now I'm fired up. Like we got Avalanche Dog. We got Star Wars. Good Lord. Let's uh, let's get a game in here. We got one more, game, mm -hmm. one more day before that. But uh, all right. That's going to wrap it up. All right. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. And making this your first listen of the day. That is always appreciated. Uh, like I said, make sure you follow us on our social media outlets. He is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. I am Chris Maselli. This is the Locked On Avalanche, and I guess half Locked On Star Wars podcast. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>